This camera has a bunch of features, both photo and video, that Sony Alpha cameras do not have. Some of which are pretty useful and I would really love to see on Sony cameras potentially in the future. I'm very much a Sony user if you are new to the channel here, but occasionally I pick up new cameras to try them out to see what the competition has. This is actually the very first Lumix camera that I've ever laid my hands on. Panasonic sent it through as a loaner. They didn't say when I have to return it. They didn't say I had to do anything with it. They're not expecting anything, just really to get it in my hands and see what I think. Most of the people, most of you guys watching this are also Sony users, and that's why I'm making this video, because this has things you may be interested in that Sony just doesn't have. Now by now, unless you're new to the channel, you probably are very aware of my obsession with shooting photos in a very wide aspect ratio. This allows you to do that in camera without having to crop in post. These are all the aspect ratios you can shoot in, including this one right here, 65 by 24. That is a very, very wide, very thin looking image. My very video centric mind loves to compose and look at images in this way. And you can do this in camera. You don't have to throw into Lightroom or an app, which I've talked about before when I did it with the A7C II, which you can watch this video on up here if you're interested in that. And it just makes for a very refreshing experience to just be able to get my images immediately how I want them to look pretty much straight in camera. And if you're thinking, well, what if you want to still grade the images, color them in post? You see right here, LUT library. If there is a look or a style that you like to edit all of your images with, you can create a LUT from that, import it directly to the camera, put it into your LUT library and take still photos and bake in that LUT to your JPEGs, which is exactly part of the reason why people like Fuji cameras, because you can just bake in a film simulation and get a JPEG that is essentially good to go, straight in camera. And if you are a fan of shooting in that way, which I obviously am, you can even go one step further. If you shoot in RAW and JPEG and you want to apply a LUT to an image after the fact or maybe change the LUT that you used, you can go back into the playback menu here, go RAW processing, you can pick an image and you can go down and process it after the fact with a different LUT if you wanted to exactly the same way that you can with Fuji. And if you'd like to swap between LUTs when you are shooting, you can assign your quick menu to literally have it right at the top there. And then you just use one of the dials to change the LUT live and quickly. Now, if you shoot any form of astrophotography or if you're shooting at night and you want it a little bit easier on your eyes, there is a night mode, which you can turn on for both the monitor and the EVF. And you guessed it, it makes everything red, which is way easier on the eyes, but it's also beneficial if you're shooting astrophotography with other people. The back of your screen when you're in a very dark environment shooting astro is very bright and it can stand out like a sore thumb, especially in other people's images. Having everything red there still allows you to compose your images, see all the settings, and and you're not going to annoy other people. You can also, again, assign that to your quick menu and then turn it on and off. So if you do need to see colors or light in a way that isn't all red, you can quickly turn it on and off. Now, if you'd like to shoot anamorphic, Sony recently added the ability to de-squeeze the image in camera, at least for viewing. The only issue is they only allow you to do 1.3 or 2x de-squeezing. Now, there's a lot of anamorphic lenses that fall outside of this. Lumix gives you all the options. You have two, 1.8, 1.5, 1.33, and 1.3, which means you might not need to use an external monitor with this, whereas you would need to use one with Sony if you're shooting in one of these. You probably saw that the battery icon was starting to flash there, so I've had to plug in a cable because it is gonna die. Manual focus assist is an incredibly useful tool for both manual focus lenses to check focus, but also for autofocus if you're doing macro stuff or if you're using a zoom lens and you really wanna make sure that the focus is exactly how you want it. Sony cameras have had this for a long time, but Lumix does it a little bit differently and in some respects, maybe a bit better. So I have it assigned to the button on the back here. If I tap this, you'll see that my manual focus assist box appears and it's a little picture in picture that I can and move around here. And you'll see right down here that it shows me if I use the front dial, it'll zoom in by 0.1 at a time. Or if I use the rear dial, it'll go in 1x at a time. I can also zoom in with the dial on the back here to see a specific part of the image, much like you can with Sony. But here's the other difference. If you go to the menus, manual focus assist, max magnification in full, you can change to 20 X. So now you can see if I tap the button on the back here, I can zoom in with the rear dial all the way, it's showing me in the top left here, to 20 times to really make sure that focus is nailed correctly. You can't zoom in that far with Sony cameras. Here's one that's a bit more niche, but could definitely have a time and a place. If you go down to the bottom menu here, you see video divide there. What you can actually do is split a video that you've recorded on the camera into two. You can pick the part and just 
split it into two separate video files. Let's say you wanted to record to an SSD directly. You don't want to have to fumble about with memory cards or you maybe don't have any space left on your memory cards. You don't have an opportunity to dump the footage from that. You can literally just record directly to this. Plug this into the USB-C port on the side there. The options right there in the menus, USB, SSD, turn that on and record directly to an SSD, which means you can then just plug that into your computer and edit directly off of that. Now, throughout this video, you probably have seen this little red target on the back of the camera here. That's called the IS or image stabilization status scope. What it does is displays the degree of jitter to minimize camera movement. So when you depress the shutter, it will show you this little green dot. And basically, if you can keep it inside that target, you know you're getting stabilization properly. or well, the camera's able to stabilize your handheld movement as long as it's within that little target there. Now that does only work in photo. It'd be really useful to have that ability in video. If we swap to video, you'll see it just disappears. Go back to photo, it appears again. Not sure why you're not able to use that in video because it could actually be quite useful. Now we're all used to histograms and seeing those, but when you turn the histogram on here, you can actually specify where you want it to appear on the screen. So let's say I want it right there. That's where it will stay. But as well as histograms, you also have waveforms and scopes. So let's pick vector there. You can then again specify where you want that to appear on the screen. You could change that to your waveforms if you want to do the same thing. Just the ability to have extra tools is really nice. If you have an Animus Ninja 5, you have used onion skin potentially before, which is where you're able to take a picture of something and then use that picture to reframe the same image again if you need to have things match. You can reduce the amount of transparency. You can see through the image that you need to reline the other image up with. This has the same thing and it's called sheer overlay. So let's just take a random picture there. It's not in focus, but that doesn't matter. Now go to the menus, sheer overlay, turn that on, and we're gonna set the image. We're gonna use that one, set the transparency to low, and you'll now see the ghosting of the other image, so you're able to line up both of those images if you need to repeat the same shot after the fact or a different day or whatever. And that does work for both photo and video. If I change it to video now, you'll see that that same image appears there as uh, kind of like a ghost on the screen. And then the big one, which I don't need to show you, everyone talks about this camera has, that Lumix has, is open gate. In this day and age where you need to shoot both horizontal and vertical, open gate is gonna really help you out, gives you more ability to reframe or crop your vertical shot from a horizontal image after the fact. So you don't necessarily need to shoot both. I think that's arguably the biggest feature that everybody would like to see in Sony cameras. Now with all that said and done, does that mean this is a better camera than Sony cameras? These days there really isn't any bad camera anything that's come out in the past two three probably even four years is going to be good for shooting both photo and for video it's all about picking the tool that works best for you and if you see yourself using some of the features the assists the tools that this has that Sony cameras don't have then this might be a camera that you want to try out